Although my real name is Joy Schiller, I, I, I am often referred to as Schiller the Killer after people have taken my exercise classes. But, um, you know, one thing I wanted to do, I mean, I obviously am, I'm, I'm very dedicated, I'm very passionate about the whole, you know, about the impact of healthy lifestyles, but I wanted to share with you just quickly a short story uh, that changed my life that really led me and to choose this career um, as a health educator. Now, as you look at the, as the, the first slide here, you may be thinking, well, what the heck does she have the continent of Australia, <coughs> Sydney, Australia, or in the Opera House in Sydney, Australia? What does that have to do with wellness and healthy lifestyle practices? I'm sure that was going through your mind. Well, years ago, I was hired, um, recruited by the New South Wales Department of Education to teach in Sydney, Australia. And I was fortunate enough to be uh, placed in a beautiful suburb in Sydney, right along the ocean front. Well, I love the ocean. And in order to make sure that the ocean is shark free, uh, they have what they call their surf patrols. I don't know if you've, any of you have ever had the um, opportunity to go to Australia, but the surf patrol have lifeguards who patrol the waters uh, to make sure that they're shark free, that there are quite a few sharks there. But um, I hate to admit it, but I was young and footloose and fancy free, okay? So I was about 23 at the time, and I developed quite a crush on one of the lifeguards who was with the, the surf patrol. You know, and I had about 15 pounds that I wanted to lose. I wanted to look good. Couldn't quite do it. And then I, this, seeing this lifeguard, I thought that really motivated me to, to reach my goal, to lose that weight, to exercise. So I joined the local sports complex where he was employed. I took these exercise classes. I was running along the beach, not happily. My lungs felt like they were going to burst. And I'm thinking, if exercise is supposed to be so good for you, why do I feel like this? My legs be shaking. Started to eat more nutritiously. The good news is I lost the weight, looked great, felt great. He asked me out, but the bad news is he was married. Okay, so all of my efforts were to no avail. I'm really just kind of kidding. And watch out for that. Because it's exciting. All right. <laughs> They are specimens. Um, again, I'm not going to show you a full body. All right, I'm just going to show you some things, and we'll talk about that, the, Im the images. <coughs> so I just want to talk, talk to you about the relationship. This is the first one. And this is actually thoracic structures. These are the thoracic structures in here. And structures going into the thorax up in here. What makes this so neat is down here's the heart. Here are the two lungs over on the side. And when we talk about the thorax, everybody's going to assume, just pop in their head, yeah, there's the heart and the lungs. Well, this specimen I love to show because it's not just the heart and the lungs sitting there. There's a lot more information. Now, we generally, with our students, we teach about three major classes of pain. Acute pain, all of us have had acute pain. Acute pain is when you're walking through the bedroom at night and you stump your toe. That is acute pain. What do you say when that happens? <laughs> Knocks. You say, ouch, right? It's a real fast pain. hurts like the dickens and then eventually it goes away. Um, what happens when, when you're cooking and you put your hand too close to the stove? You pull it back really fast, right? That's a reflexive response to pain. That's acute pain. And the whole purpose of that, I have up here, it's transient in nature and it serves a protective function. Acute pain is protective. I often ask little kids before I even start talking, how many of you think pain is important? None of them raise their hand. How many of you think it's not important? They raise their hand. I hate pain. Until we realize that if we didn't have pain, we wouldn't be here. You'd burn your hand off without knowing it. You'd burn your digits so you wouldn't have any dexterity. So it protects us. That's what acute pain is is poor, so we don't hurt ourselves. Chronic pain, generally in medical practice, is those types of pain syndromes that last for a long period of time, and they no longer have 
any clinical significance. They're not protective anymore. We're talking rheumatoid arthritis. We're talking osteoarthritis. We're talking fibromyalgia. We're talking diabetic neuropathies. Okay? We're talking shingles, things like that, that are chronic pain syndromes, but they're not telling you anything of any significance. They're just, they hurt, and they're very bothersome, and they adversely affect your life, and you can't have a good quality of life. Those are the type of pain syndromes we need to treat. We're really good at treating acute pain. Most of the time it goes away by itself. You break your arm, we reset the arm, and it heals pretty well, and the pain eventually goes away. That's not the pain that we're working on the lab. That's not the pain we're measuring with this thing. This thing measures acute types of pain in your response to acute pain. I can tell you right now, and most of you know this already, acute types of pain are very well treated. It's not a problem. If we just had acute pain, we wouldn't have a problem because the medications that we have are very effective. It's the chronic types of pain. Now, neuropathic pain, how many of you have ever heard of this before? Most people aren't real familiar with neuropathic pain. That is the type of chronic pain that results from some type of nerve injury. The nerve injury could have been when you were six years old and you fell off your bike and squished your arm or broke your leg. It can be 40 or 50 years old before the symptoms start to manifest. So chronic pain of neuropathic origin means you've got some type of nerve damage. When we talk about the media in this country, what we really are talking about most of the time when you read about it and hear about it, we're talking about the news media, aren't we? Talking about the newspapers, the television, all these guys. But I'd like to make a case for you that the media, in a broader sense, is actually all of these things. It's the print media, traditional fiction like poems, stories, novels, those kinds of things. There's a rich, rich tradition of literature about medicine. Traditional nonfiction, essays, magazine stories, newspaper articles. There are visual media. The arts of painting, sculpture, drawing, that sort of thing. Theater is a visual medium. So is television. So is the movies. And of course, electronic media, radio, which has been around now for 100 years. Television, fictional and nonfiction, and so forth. And the new ones, digital media, computer games, the internet. All of these are, quote, the media. Well, we obviously don't have time in 30 to 45 minutes to talk about this entire broad spectrum. So what I'm going to do is give you this sort of swooping view from history of uh, the ancient world up to the 21st century.